installment of the South African Rally Raid Championship, the most exciting form of motor racing in the country, and the only place you can see the fearsome Dakar Rally Monsters compete on local soil. This is Round 2, the Sugar Belt 400, and all the action is brought to you by Toyota, Ford and Pirelli. Welcome back to SARC Racing and Round 2 of the 2023 Championship. This time round, the Rally Raid Circus moved to the KZM town of Eston, roughly an hour inland from Durban. The Sugar Belt 400, as the race is known, has featured on the calendar in the past, but the 2022 race was cancelled due to the devastating floods that swept through the province of KwaZulu Natal last year. This year, however, the weather held for the race, and even though the temperatures were mild, the action was certainly hot. The DSP was again sent at the Beaumont Eston Farmers Club where the race HQ was also situated. The event featured the Pirelli qualifying race, which was scheduled to take place over a distance of 50 kilometers, followed by two race loops totaling 160 kilometers each. These loops were split between a southern and northern loop, offering a mix of terrain to the competitors. With that, let's jump straight into the meaty details of the championship to date, as well as the action out on the Sugar Belt, starting with the lads in Class T1. This class has been highly competitive throughout 2022, and the battle seems to be continuing unabated into 2023. Defending champion Eben Basson was edged out in round one of the championship, and finds himself in third place in the title standings. Former bike racer Nick Pinar was in second, but the top spot after round one belonged to Johan de Brain in his red line Revo. We caught up with the man himself prior to the start of the Sugar Belt 400. It's different having the target on your back for a change. And um, I think we got very, very lucky at Molalon. While the plan was for the Pirelli qualifying race to take place over 52 kilometers, a fire broke out along the route. And while a large portion of the field managed to complete the full distance, several crews had to be rerouted as a result of the fire. The organizers were forced to truncate the timings at the 20.29 kilometer mark, which favored some crews more than others but this was the only fair solution to the problem. The dice came up snake eyes for De Brain and co-driver Gerard Skitter, as the pair posted only the sixth fastest time in qualifying. This left them as the 17th car on the road, and the best part of a minute behind the pole sitters. Ahead of De Brain, Johan and Sean van Staden went just two seconds quicker, clearly showing how timings were in the shortened qualifying race. Nick Pinar and Carl Swanepoel in a red-lined motorsport Revo narrowly missed out on a podium finish. But when the dust had settled, the top three qualifiers were Daniel Schroeder and Ryan Bland in third place, trailing Eben Basson and Leander Pinar in the Team Hilux Rally Raid machine. In the end, our ever-pole position went to young Jaden Els in the King Price Extreme SVR, with the experienced Alvin Funk reading the notes. They set a time of 16 minutes and 44 seconds, 8 seconds clear of Basson and Pinar. We went quite well up to just before the first split and then we wrong slotted so luckily this uh, the split uh, where they cut the qualifying time helped us now. And here's confirmation of Els and Falk leading the pack ahead of Basson and Pinar in second and Schroeder and Bland in third. This was race day at the famed Sugar Belt 400, one of the iconic races on the calendar. And although there was some rain predicted for late in the day, the race got underway in dry conditions when the flag was waved shortly after 8 a.m. It didn't take long for the battle to heat up. In fact, it would turn into a full-scale war between the main protagonists, while the rest were simply in a fight to survive. Newcomers Gerard and Rudy Heinlein did not survive their sugar belt baptism of fire, and neither did Daniel Schroeder and Ryan Bland, who were considered to be contenders for a win here in KZN. It was an eventful race for the father and son pairing of Johan and Sean van Staden who stopped their Renault Duster to help Jürgen Schroeder and Stuart Gregory back onto their wheels after the latter rolled their Nissan Navara. But it seemed like no good deed gets left unpunished as the van Stadens then ran into trouble of their own and that prevented them from reaching the finish. Someone who did reach the finish was the red line pairing of Johan de Brain and Gerard Skitter. These two came into the Sugar Belt as championship points leaders, but the race gave them an opportunity to do some character building as they had to deal with a number of difficulties. The pairing persisted and earned some points for finishing in seventh. 
They were beaten to the finish by the 18-year-old lady driver Alia Kolok, with the experienced Rian Kraling reading the notes in a redlined VK15. It was the first taste of South African soil for the lady from Dubai, who at just 18 has a great future ahead of her after recording a sixth place finish in Class T1. South Africa is proving to be a popular playground for international crews with regular visitor Jürgen Schroeder and local navvy Stuart Gregory reaching the finish in fifth place. And that's after surviving a roll and getting some help from the Finstadens early on. We were now nearing the business end of the Class T1 field with four crews still in the fight for the three remaining podium positions. The contenders? Two Team Hilux Rally Raid Hilux is piloted by the Blickno brothers for Shian Battis and defending class champions Eben Basson and Leander Pinot. The red line rev of Nick Pinot and Carl Swanepoel and the King Price Extreme SVR of Jaden Nels and Alvin Fonk. And this is how it played out. Paul Sitters, Els and Fonk were first out of the blocks, but the pairing started to lose time towards the end of loop one. Fonk was feeling ill and the pair lost the lead to the red line river of Pinon Swanapool at the halfway mark. In fact, they had no choice but to replace the experienced navigator with Henry Cohn. He became available after their class T1 plus car was forced to retire in loop one. Meanwhile, they were also passed on the timesheets by the rapid Hilux of the Sun and Pinon and found themselves in a fight for the final podium position against the second team Hilux rally rate car in the hands of the Blickno brothers. In the end, the Blicknos, in only their second year in the sport and their first ever sugar belt, missed out on a podium finish by just 67 seconds. And that after 400 kilometers of gravel road racing. Youngster Jaden Els, with Cohn in the hot seat, recovered well to claim the third step on the podium after an eventful race. And although second place was probably not quite what the defending champions had in mind before the start of the race, a second place finish would have been a decent way to get their title defense on track for Eben Basson and Leander Papis Pinar, who had an eventful race that included a number of punctures and getting stuck in the ditch. And staying out of trouble is exactly what Nick Pinar and Carl Sonnepel did from behind the wheel of their redline Revo. It was a great performance from the former motorcycle racer who claimed his first victory in the hotly contested T1 class. The scoreboard confirms the 8 minute difference between Pinar in 1st and Bassan in 2nd, with youngster Els rounding out the podium positions. The Blicknose finished in a fine 4th ahead of Schroeder and Dubai driver Leah Kolak, with the brain claiming the final class T1 points. And finally, the well-deserved taste of victory after a tough battle against the competition, as well as the tough terrain the Sugar Belt had to offer. Needless to say, Pinar was satisfied with his maiden victory. Long day in the seat, but uh, it seemed to pay off, so we were very, very grateful for the result. Next up, let's take a look at Class T, which remains one of the most cost-effective entry points to the sport of rally raid racing. With that said, the entry list for Round 1 was limited with a similar situation at round two. Even so, it was Hendrik Duplessis who drew first blood ahead of Nico Ninova as the championship standing show. Duplessis, who pilots a blue and orange Ford Ranger, made his Sugar Belt debut this year, and the Class T driver had a very clear plan for the weekend. It's our first time here. Um, my dad warned me because they raced here a long time ago. In the end, only two Class T cars took the starters' orders for the Sugar Belt 400 with Duplessis and St. Heinrich trading blows with Skalk Berg and Henk Janssen van Vieren in their King Price Extreme VW Amarok. Once the dust had settled after the shortened Pirelli qualifying race, it was Berger who took pole position, but only by a single second. Clearly a tight race was on the cards for these two crews. And this makes it official, Berger and Janssen van Vieren took the win, with the Duplessis pairing just a second back. Berg and Duplessis were both in the mood for a fight, but unfortunately for both races, this fight never materialized. The father and son pairing of Hendrik and Heinrich Duplessis are fairly new to the sport of rally raid racing, and on this occasion they saw the ugly side of Lady Luck, who forced them to throw in the towel midway through the day. This left Snelt Berger Jr. and his navigator Henk Janssen van Vieren as the only competitors left in class team. <laughs> But Berger's fight was with the route and the challenges that the sugarcane presented. 
this occasion, the big man emerged victorious as the King Price Extreme Forks Vark and Amrock returned to Eston. Six hours and 16 minutes behind the wheel gave the pairing a decent overall result, as well as claiming victory in Class T. All in all, a good day behind the wheel for the King Price Extreme Team Principal. First time out, uh, win in the class, uh, yeah, that's impressive. Onto the cruise in Class G, also known as the side-by-sides or sideies. These open-wheeled machines are deceptively quick in the right hands, and when it comes to crews that can extract the best from their Canon Mavericks, there's no shortage in the SARC. The Senna Mostert has become synonymous with this class, first with Vanna Mostert and brother Leon chalking up some victories, and more recently with Vanna's son Ian reading the notes. For 2023, the father and son have swapped seats, and it seems the plan is paying off, as they nailed the first win in this year's championship. After the opening round, it was Mostert who led ahead of Glen Teron and Evold van Rensburg. We had a chat with young Ian prior to the start of the Sugar Belt 400. We had a, an amazing start with a first place early in the year, so hopefully we can keep it up. As it panned out, the Mosters were sidelined by mechanical problems and would face an uphill battle during the main race. A similar fate befell Jeff Minnett and Gerard Sneeman in the hydro power equipment Can-Am Maverick. In the end, four of the six Class G crews completed the Pirelli qualifying race, with François Neil de Witt going fourth fastest. They had lost more than 25 minutes due to some technical difficulties, none of which plagued the top three crews in the class. Glenn Teron and Craig Galvin in the Moto Netix machine posted a time of 19 minutes and 34 seconds, good enough for third. They were bested by Theo Erasmus and Edward Woodendon, who went five seconds quicker. But were in turn outdone by Ilbert van Rensburg and Hans Skippers, who took pole position with a margin of two seconds. From the flames and from the smoke, it was a no-go, definitely. So I think we'd rather play it safe. We're here for tomorrow and uh, we'll give it our best. And there you have it. Van Rensburg on top, followed by Erasmus and Teron. The route on the race day of the 2023 Sugar Bowl 400 was always going to present a tough challenge for the smallest cars, with the least amount of power in the field. But don't be fooled. The little sideies are light, which means they're quick to reach their top speeds. They also handle well and can break on a dime. And when you add all of those things together, they make for rather quick little race cars. Climbs between the Class G Warriors are usually close, and the Sugar Belt was no exception. And after a tumultuous 350 kilometers, new winners emerged in the form of Ewald van Rensburg and Johan Skippers after 6 hours and 33 minutes of racing, converting their pole position into a race victory. But it was rather close as a mere 80 seconds was all that separated them from a charging Jeff Minnett and Gerard Sneeman in their hydro power equipment can and Maverick. Youngster Ian Mostert and Father Van in their Moto Netics Racing Can-Am battled traffic and motion sickness to earn the points that came with their third place in Class G. That will see them keeping their lead on the points table. Their teammates, Glenn Teron and Craig Galvin in a similar Can-Am finished fourth in the class and were eighth overall, with François Neil de Witt the very last finishes. They were fifth in Class G. The team broke down and took a 10-hour penalty to be able to continue and they made it to the finish. Unfortunately for Theo Erasmus and partner Edward Wundahl, they didn't reach the end. There were happy moments on the winner's podium for Class G victors Evald van Rensburg and Johan Skippers, who got to spray the bubbly from the top step. Tough event. Um, we really battled today. It was tough. Uh, we pushed through. The scoreboard revealed that it got mighty close in the end, with Minnet and Sneeman getting to within two minutes at the end, with the Mosses climbing all the way up into the final podium spot.